Hello, welcome to this audio stream which is running alongside the May month of repentance. This is audio 29, just under 10 minutes as usual. Hello, Rev Jim here and I thought we'd use the last three days uh, of our time together to see what might be possible now that we have repented. What, what might God make possible for us? What is? What are the joys? What are the fruits? What are the blessings? What are the opportunities? I've just picked two or three. Today, uh, the title is Breaking the Enemy, and it's 2 Chronicles 10, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. None of us on this live stream are very powerful or very influential. Most of us are just ordinary Christians doing the best we can in our churches, wherever we are. We don't have great earthly power. What St Paul teaches us here is that we don't need it. A repentant people have divine power to demolish strongholds. Why must we be repentant people? Because if we're not, the enemy will say, you can't demolish me because you've got this and this and this wrong. He will accuse us before the Lord. But if we have repented, the enemy has no hold over us and we can come against his strongholds. Joshua taught it and it's always impressed me. He wanted his promise. His promise was the promised land. Our promise is that the Lord will use Ghana, a humble and contrite Ghana, to touch all West Africa and be a light to the world. That's what I long for. That's what I've worked for for over 30 years. But like, a, a, like us, many things in the way, Joshua had a very big thing in the way. He had Jericho in the way. Jericho was strong and well fortified, and well defended. Now he had a lot of people. He had a few soldiers, but most of the people were not soldiers. They were civilians who could, could wave a sword, but they weren't soldiers. They didn't understand strategy and all, all that. So he couldn't use military might. So he chose to use spiritual might. He had the people march around the city once every day with the Ark and the trumpeters and the Levites and the soldiers that there were at the front. On the seventh day they marched around seven times and this is what he told them. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted and at the sound of the trumpet, when the men gave a loud shout, the walls collapsed. So everyone charged straight in and they took the city. They took the stronghold. The strong place was broken by faith in the Lord. And I think a repentant people have a great opportunity to break many of the strongholds which are in Ghana. And it's easy to start pointing the finger at the secular world, but most of the strongholds are within our nature or within our churches. So let me just remind you of the things we've looked at many times. Pride. I've heard, if I've heard it once, I've heard it a hundred times. God will never judge Ghana because he loves us. Where, where does that come from? It doesn't come from the Bible, that's for sure. It's a stronghold of pride in the hearts of many, many, many people and many, many, many churches. It has to come down. And then spiritual blindness. It, it, it staggers me. Not only do people allow pastors who don't understand the scriptures to preach unscriptural things over and over and over again, but when people come who have much more experience in the Christian world, they won't listen to them. Oh, we have our own Ghanaians to preach that. We don't need you from the West. I've heard this many, many, many times. I haven't the time to list here the crazy things I've heard preached in this country. It's not, not that, it's that people listen and people support these people. This spiritual blindness is a stronghold in our church, our churches. And then hidden sin. We are, it's everywhere. The Lord once showed me all the things that were hidden in the lives of the church in Ghana. I'm not going to speak about that here, but it horrified me. And so much of this sin is hidden. And hidden sin uh, gives access to the, for the enemy. But a repentant people, then the enemy has no opportunity to attack us. And satanic acti activity. I often wonder how many Christians go to the fetish. And I often wonder how many curses are placed by Christians on other people. Satanic activity is not only around us, brothers and sisters, but it's in us. Again, I don't have the time to list the occasions when I've discovered that. 
These are some of the strongholds which have to be broken, along with all those terrible things uh, that we looked at one day. I can't remember which one we looked at Mark. We looked at Mark chapter 7, didn't we, of the things that come from out of the heart. Uh, I'm just looking it up now on my, on my tablet for us to look at. Here we are. What come, This is Mark uh, 7.20. What comes out of a person is what defiles them. From within, out of a person's heart, uh, the, the evil thoughts come. Sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance and folly. All those strongholds are in our churches and in our people. But once we are repentant, we, if we have any of those things in us, have repented of them. So the enemy has no longer any ground on which to accuse us. We have every ground now to accuse and bring him down because we have the divine power in us which brings down strongholds. These are the strongholds that have to be broken. And a repentant people can do it. Satan no longer has any hold of us and we can do it. Our weapon well, we spoke about it one day. It's the blood of Jesus. I love this verse from Hebrews 12. The blood of Jesus speaks a better blood than the blood of Abel. And we can speak the blood of Jesus if we are repentant people. We can speak the blood of Jesus against the enemy and he will have to retreat. Um, as we repent, we are changed. As we repent, we become powerful. As we repent, we release the power of the blood. And as we do that, Ghana can be changed. Uh, 1 John 1 7. The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from every sin. If we allow these strongholds to continue to block the flow of the Spirit, we are heading towards judgment. I have already seen the Lord draw his sword once over Ghana, and like Amos, I pleaded with him, please put it away. And he did but he wouldn't take his hand off the handle. I said, put it away and leave it alone, but he would not take his hand from the handle of the sword, which led me to believe that judgment has been averted once, but don't let's think it's gone away. If we let these strongholds stay, and the many others, because of course Christians are working in the world, so if we've got a stronghold in us and we work in a school, we carry that stronghold into the school. We. We carry our strongholds everywhere. and We're polluting everywhere. If we don't repent, if we don't break these strongholds, then judgment will surely come. But a repentant people can break them. So if you've got one in you and you've broken it, it's broken in the school where you work or where you study. If you've got a stronghold in your church that's broken, your church will receive and experience more of the flow of the Spirit and will be able to do greater and greater and greater things. Breaking the strongholds is a privilege that is given to those who have repented before the Lord. Then we find we have access to divine power and we can bring them all down. I find that very thrilling. Now our prayers. Philippians 2.9 At the name of Jesus every knee shall bow. Lord, you have the power to break every stronghold of Satan in my life. Please do it. And then Hebrews 12, 24. The blood of Jesus speaks a better blood than the blood of Abel. Lord, release the spirit of repentance among us so that the strongholds of the enemy might be broken and the nation turn in repentance back to the ways of the Lord. Amen. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.